Hello, in this video we're going to look at finding the volume of a surface by revolution. It asks, find the volume of the solid generated by revolving the region bounded by y equals 4x minus x squared and y equals x squared about the line x equals 4. Okay, so we're revolving around a non-axis. We're going to see that we're going to need the shell method for this one. Um, let's investigate why. So once I revolve that curve around x equals 4, um, it'll kind of pop up on this side and it'll be a curve or a volume, a solid, something like this with three dimensions. Notice how I've already graphed it for you. That's some of the legwork you're going to have to do in this and figure out where these two functions intersect to see where that region that gets revolved is. I've got it graphed for us here. So if I wanted to attack this with the disk or washer method, I would have to notice that because I'm going about this vertical line, my representative slab would be perpendicular to that axis. So it'd be right here. And you can see how if I revolve this thing around the curve, it would form a little, a little washer, right? Like that, oh, beautiful washer. Okay, well, in that case, my slab, as I would move through, it would fill up the y values. If it's filling up the y values, that means I would integrate with respect to y because it would go from y equals 0 to y equals 4, which means my functions need to be x equals something in terms of y. But see, that'd be kind of hard. These functions are already defined for y. I wouldn't want to change them in the first place. And then this first one, this we would really struggle with solving that for x. Okay, we'd have a really hard time with that which means I don't want to integrate with respect to y. I want to res integrate with respect to x. That means my slab needs to be like this and fill up according to the x values. And there, when I now all of a sudden have a slab that is parallel to an axis of rotation, it means we're doing the shell method. Okay, and plus you can envision when and this really helps if you can envision this. When this thing swings around, okay, when it swings around that axis of rotation, I all of a sudden have this cylinder idea that pops out. So you see that cylinder and you think shell method. Well, that means when I'm doing the shell method, I know the volume is equal to 2 pi times the integral from A to B of the radius times the height times dx because I'm integrating with respect to x. But now I need to find my radius, I need to find my height. Both of those are functions, okay, a variable, something that's changing. Looking through this, let's break down some of the easy things. The bounds. I am going with respect to x, so it's filling up. So I look from where to where on the x-axis. I'm going from x equals 0 to 2. That's where the bounds of my region are. And again, I can see that on the graph, but if I didn't have it graphed perfectly here for you, you would have to take the two functions, set them equal to each other, and then solve this until you get x equals 0, comma, 2. So my integral is going from 0 to 2. All right, what about the radius? The radius of this cylinder, so, so one of my shells right there, the radius would be from there to here. Now, that radius is always if I'm integrating with respect to x, it might be just x if I'm rotating around the y-axis. But if I'm rotating around a different one, such as this time, x equals 4, I have to manipulate that a little bit. And it's going to end up being 4 minus x as my radius. Okay, so let's look at one example there. What if I'm right here? My slab is here. Okay, so I have this. Um, cylinder, what would be the radius of it? Well, we can see it's 3. Okay, the length going from 1 to 4 is 3. So that kind of makes sense. 4 minus my x value. 4 minus 1. And then what if I'm way up at my top here? That very last shell. Well, in that case, my radius here is 2. I'm going from x equals 2 to x equals 4. Once again, that makes sense. 4 minus 2. So I'm kind of I'm able to check my radius thing I put here, and it does make sense with a few specific examples. Now the easy way to do this, whenever you are finding your radius of your shell, 
you go either top minus bottom if you are integrating with respect to y, so going up and down, or like we are in this case, right minus left. And I'm talking about in reference between my axis of rotation and then where my slab is. So see my axis is to the right of where the slab is, the original slab on the original region. So you go right minus left, four minus the x, okay? So we get four minus x. And then the height, the height of one of these cylinders, one of these shells, it's bouncing between the two curves. So again, you go with that idea of top minus bottom or right minus left. And this, because we got top minus bottom, we're gonna go four x minus x squared, which is my top curve, minus my bottom curve of x squared. And then the thickness of each of those shells, dx. Okay, we're gonna work through this integral. We've got it all set up, so we've done the hard part. Now we're just gonna work through it, simplify it a bit before we integrate. Whenever you rotate around that non-axis axis of rotation, um, it adds a little bit to it because you see we have to now do this foiling with the four minus x. So four times four x is 16 x. Four times negative two x squared, negative eight x squared. We got negative four x squared. And then lastly, a positive two x cubed. So I'm gonna go through this one more time before integrating, combine some like terms, and I'll also put it in um, standard form as far as the exponents go. So minus 12x squared, and then plus 16x. Okay, I'll swing this on up over here and integrate. So we have two pi out front, and then power rules. So add one to the exponent, and then divide by that minus 12x cubed over three, and I'll go through this again and reduce some of these fractions because they do reduce nicely. And we are going from two to zero. Okay, so that equals two pi times x to the fourth over two, minus 12 over three reduces to four, x to the third, plus eight x squared. All right, so I can just have do we evaluate this at two? Because when I evaluate at zero, it all eliminates. So two to the fourth is 16. 16 divided by two is eight. Two cubed is eight times four is 32. And then two squared is four times eight is 32. Look at that. I have two pi times eight once the 32s cancel. And then I get 16 pi and we get units cubed. So that is the volume of our solid. And that came about by revolving our region around x equals four, a non-axis. The big takeaway here, two things. When you do your shell method, your slab is parallel to your axis of rotation. That's a shell method. Also really helpful if you can visualize what it looks like when you revolve your slab around your axis, okay? It kind of will it will look like a cylinder or it will look like a disc slash washer. Both indications of it being the shell method then. Second big thing, when I revolve around something that is not an axis, you need to think about top minus bottom or right minus left. In this case, we did the right, which is the axis, minus the left, which is x, which is where your slab is located. Both are key components to helping you do better with finding these volume um, using either the shell or disk method.